Heavenly Father, as we ponder these words from Scripture today, come by your Holy Spirit, reside in our hearts, lead us and guide us to know you better. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please do be seated. Well, having filled in application papers recently and been through an interview process as well, uh, one of the things that I've been required to write and talk about is being in a team. It's a classic interview question. Can you give me an example of how you work in a team? Or can you give me an example of when you developed a team to work more effectively and efficiently? Ooh. I wonder how you'd answer those questions. I wonder whether you're someone who works well in a team or not. I'll give you a clue as to what my interview answer usually sounds something like. Um, it says, I am equally comfortable working in a team or by myself. I can happily demonstrate examples of where I have successfully done both. Over the years, I have found that people invite or expect me to take the lead in many teams, but I can work in groups where I am not the leader. Of course, if you read between the lines and you know anything about me, you'll realize that me saying, I can work in groups where I'm not the team leader, might be true. It's not really my style. Let's be honest about that. Can and prefer are two very different things. Some of you are laughing because you know exactly what I'm like. Thank you very much. Okay, if I'm completely honest, I like to be in charge. I like to be able to set the tone, to set the direction, and to control the speed a little bit as well. And the same is true of my life. I certainly like to be in control of my life. I'm sure to some extent the same is true of each of you. Not many of us like being told what to do, and we like to maintain control of decisions that affect our lives. But I am absolutely fascinated by pilots. Not pilots of aircraft, but pilots of ships. If you don't know what I'm talking about, allow me to explain. In the main, if you've got a ship, the captain is in charge, right? The captain's in charge. They make the orders, they set the direction, they plan everything, that's their decision. But in certain parts of the world, local knowledge is deeply important. For example, when a ship wants to sail up a river mouth or into a harbour, there are often hidden sandbanks or unusual features that mean that a ship could very easily run aground. And in some of these cases, regular naval maps aren't good enough in those situations because there are strange tides and there are swells and there are currents which the maps don't tell you about and they change during the day. So the captain requests the assistance of a pilot. There's usually a little boat called a pilot boat that comes alongside out from the harbour to meet with the big ship and it allows the pilot to get onto the ship. He or she can then effectively take over the bridge and give out all the orders until the ship is safely docked or through that channel. And I'm fascinated because legally, the captain is still in charge, except in the Panama Canal, apparently. Right? But legally, the captain is still in charge. But there will be places where no ship is allowed to go unless they have a pilot on board. And I've watched documentaries where you see footage of the pilot on the bridge. The captain watches them like a hawk, but effectively hands over control to someone who is not a member of their own crew. I'm talking about this because in today's Gospel reading we heard about the advocate. It's a name that Jesus gives to the Holy Spirit, or advocate is the word that we use in English. But the original Greek text uses the word parakletos, the paraclete. And if you spit, I did that, I did that this morning at Stanton, I said spit instead of split. If you split parakletos into two, you get para, meaning alongside, like parallel lines, they run alongside each other, you get para, and you also get kletos, which means appointed or called. So the paraclete 
the Holy Spirit is the one who is called alongside. The one who is called alongside. You could think of the Holy Spirit as the one who is called alongside in the same way that a harbour pilot is called alongside the captain of the ship. In the same way that there are times in life when the captain might not really feel like relinquishing control of his or her ship, there will be many times when we don't really want to relinquish control of our lives. However, just like the harbour pilot, the Holy Spirit doesn't really want to take over everything. The Holy Spirit comes to work alongside us and support us through the difficult decisions. At all times, we are still in control. But learning to share that control with someone who knows much better than we do is going to serve us much better. Now, in his words to the disciples, Jesus promises that the Holy Spirit will come and teach us Not new stuff, but stuff that Jesus has already taught us. I think that's a really important thing to point out. The Holy Spirit isn't going to suddenly lead us in a direction that Jesus has not previously encouraged or condoned. It's really important. So, of course, then when Jesus says, those who love me will keep my word, that's not always easy. That's challenging. Some of the things that Jesus asks us to keep aren't easy. Now, I've said before that one of my favourite Christian quotes in recent times is by John Mark Comer, who talks about how we often try to create God in our own image. John Mark's American, so you'll have to excuse his reference to politics in America, but uh, here's what he says. Here's what John Mark says about creating God in our own image. Here's how you know if you've created God in your own image. He agrees with you on everything. He hates the people you hate. He voted for the person you voted for. If you're Republican, so is he. If you're Democrat, she is too. Clever that. If you're passionate about X, then God is passionate about X. If you're open and elastic about sexuality, so is he. And above all, he's tame. You never get mad at God or blown away by him or scared of him because he's controllable. And of course, he is a figment of your imagination. There you go, that's what John Mark Comer has to say about that. And I love that quote because I think it says so much about Christianity in England and the rest of the Western world. So let me make this really clear. There are things which Jesus says that I find really difficult to agree with. But Jesus says, those who love me will keep my word. Why? Because Jesus is the one who knows the way. In fact, Jesus is the way to the Father. So if he knows the way, he also knows what isn't the way. When the Holy Spirit comes, he isn't some new ministry, a new direction. He's sometimes known as the Spirit of Jesus. But the ministry of the Holy Spirit is a continuation of the way of Jesus. I've said it before, when you look at the book of Acts, at the beginning of the book of Acts, it says, I have mentioned in my first book, Dear Theophilus, what what Jesus began to say and do. And then he goes on, and now I'm going to tell you about what he continued to do in the book of Acts because he continued to do it through the work of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will guide us in Jesus' way. But we have to be like the captain of the ship. We have to be willing to relinquish full control. And as I said before, God has given us free will. We are genuinely free to take back that control at any moment. We are free to take back that control whenever we want. But at what cost does that freedom come? 
without the harbour pilot, ships run the risk of dashing against the unseen hazards in the water. Without the Holy Spirit, we face the dangers of this world solely on our own wits. And I want to tell you that the Bible is full of accounts where the people of God have tried to go it alone or follow their own plan. Even if you've not read the Bible all the way through, I bet you can guess how that worked out for them. <clears throat> God offers us the most amazing guide we could ever pray for, himself. He offers us the one who knows all the right answers and all the right paths to take. He offers us the guide who promises to lead us straight into the loving arms of the Father. So as we look to Pentecost in a couple of weeks' time, I want you to know that the Holy Spirit, the paraclete, is drawing alongside you and me to offer help. How willing are you to invite him on board in your life in order to help steer your ship through the seas of life? Amen.